Hello, folks. I'm Randall King, the artistic director of the San Jose Stage Company. We are launching our Beyond the Boards. You've seen a lot of great plays in this theater, a lot of great artists on the other side of the fourth wall. This is an opportunity for us to talk intimately with some of these artists and give you an insight into their process and their collaboration with the San Jose Stage Company. Today we have Bay Area actor, director, artistic director of the San Francisco African American Shakespeare Company and playwright and force of nature, L. Peter Callender. Hey buddy, uh, yes, L. Peter Callender, artistic director, African American Shakespeare Company here in San Francisco. Um, and bon vivant. Uh, thank you, sir. You're speaking to me um, at my home here in Oakland, um, but even across the miles, our, our friendship looms and, and lingers. So it's good to see your face, my friend. Good to see you too, my friend. Thank you. Um, so what, what have you been doing it during your stay in place? What do you have bubbling? Yeah, man, I'm doing a few things. Um, as with you, as, as, as are you with uh, San Jose Stage and a lot of other theaters around the country, coast to coast, we're trying to figure out how to present, how to live in this new bubble of a world where we've created for ourselves, how to um, move forward, when to move forward, in what capacity um, do we do a season, do we not do a season, do we do a partial season, do we, um, do, we do this until we can get back in the same room. Um, it's so sad to see those red seats empty beside you, behind you, but it's, it's, what, it's what we have to do. So we're all trying to figure out again now again how to walk how to put one foot in front of the other right um so i'm doing a little bit of writing i'm adapting a play i wrote i'm starting a couple of other things that i wrote um i'm trying to do an interview uh programming similar to what you're doing here with beyond the boards um we are we have a big company meeting coming up on friday with my entire staff and Sherry Young, the executive director. And again, we're just trying to figure out what to do next, where to plant that seed, and hopefully it'll grow because all this is new to all of us. So um, yeah, a little writing, a little, a um, uh, lot of reading of new plays, a lot of reading of plays, getting ready for down the line. Uh, just trying to stay afloat, man. We are, ha we are having to reinvent ourselves. I do think we'll come out of this with a stronger sense of how to connect virtually with our supporters, our patrons of the arts, supporters of the I arts. Do. Uh, I agree. That's what I'm hoping for, and I hope we come out of it quicker than it seems we will. Uh, I'm sitting right now in the Empty Stage Company, which is my home away from home. Uh, came down to pick up the mail and, and realized I'm just gonna do this from here. This is something that our audience doesn't see, our space empty. <laughs> Right, exactly. The so, chance to get a sense of, and I gotta tell you, when I do sit in this theater, when it's struck completely empty and there's not a soul in the room but myself, is when I get the true sense of the sanctuary that a theater is, that much like a church, there's a, I feel like Quasimoto, no one can get me in here <laughs> as long as I stay in here. And coming in the other day and getting a sense of its emptiness, it's, it's, empty on a different level that's a little disarming i'm sure it, man it still I'm holds sure. it's thank you but randy there's always there's always that presence right there's always if you sit there long enough you will hear the applause you will <laughs> hear you will hear shakespeare you will hear mammoth you will hear the the, the great playwrights you've done at that stage the uh uh, I've had the pleasure, the ultimate pleasure of directing in that space and performing in that space. And I'm sure as artistic director, my brother, you, you're, still, you're still feeling the presence in that room. And uh, I, the ghost lights behind you are just, it's, it's a, it, to me, it's a beautiful sight. It will always be a beautiful sight. It hit me very hard the other day coming in to check the security of the building. And as I was walking out, turning off the lights, I walked back on the stage and in, in, in the realization that in the 30 years that we have performed here, this, there may, I may not be performing in this space for an audience. It, it, it just felt finite for me in a sense that by the time we get to assemble again, we'll have a new theater for you to come to. Wow. You know, wow. So there's a, there's, a, there's a shining side to that revelation, but it was, a, it was a strange moment to spin in this room and realize the two sides of the fourth wall, like you say, as an actor, mm -hmm. as a director, 
and and just the moments that have existed out here for me in these 30 years i was twirling and i just said okay um i want to do this with you here yeah even Thank though you. i came down in my mask <laughs> got my mask i got mine my is very mask. close as well as well it's I, someone called me the other day actually i'm sorry emailed me messaged me and said um uh peter i i just found a playbill from a show I saw um, in Florida when I was working in Florida. And he, he, he said, it, it occurred to me that this was the last play that I saw. This was, the, this was the last play I saw before everything went dark. And it meant so much to him that this play, as a matter of fact, a play I directed, was the last play he saw, Skeleton Crew. And that mm. touched me. It could very well be the last play he will see for a year, for six months, yeah. nine months, ten months, which is because he's a theater goer, he sees everything. So that that touched me as well. But well, when like do you said, what, what's going on with your new space? Um, uh, we're still working with uh, Swinson Company. Oh, Sirens. <laughs> I thought I thought I would be the first. You know, I came out of stay in place. I got to go, Peter. <laughs> Uh, I lost my thread. Um, um, the Swenson Group. Yes, we're talking with the architects. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm meeting this uh, again this Friday with them, working with the theater architects from uh, Lynn Arbach and Associates, who actually did uh, uh, Berkeley Rep's old space. Nice. Uh, and, and, and that architect that worked on that space worked on changing this Goodyear Tire Center into the theater that we've lived in for 30 years. Stephen Pollock, great. Uh, he was a state equity stage manager and a lighting designer and has become a great theater architect. So he's consulting on that, on this project. So we, they want us out next January. They want us to move out of the building and to break ground next March, which the turnaround on that could be, you know, 16 to 18 months. So right. we might be timing out just about perfect to get everyone back in our new space with all the bells and whistles that we've lacked in this one. Um, well, but congratulations, gosh, it's man. such a comfortable home, and I've had so many incredible yeah. moments shared on both sides of the fourth wall here that it was bittersweet the other day, you know? Of uh, course. And I mean, but, but your career, man, your career, you, you go back. I mean, I remember the very first time uh, that we worked together. I think it was the very first time we actually met um, doing, a, doing a work at, um, at uh, what was San Jose. Ladies Day. Not for Burning. Ladies Not for Burning. And that was the first time I saw your work, man. And I was like, who is this guy? Who is? And then, of course, being introduced to you and, and, and Kath and, and the San Jose stage because of that show. And we've been friends ever since. And, and, and Rod Knapp was also in that. We played. That's correct. Together. Yeah, that was great. That was great. It was the last show that uh, San Jose Rep did off site before they moved into the Hammer. Was it? We did it at Santa Clara University. What? Uh, wow. Okay. I thought. Yes, you're right. You're yeah. right. <laughs> it was I a long the time ago. Man. The Elephant Man was done at the Montgomery stage. Right. Right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, and that was the first time I worked with San Jose stage, 25 years ago, because my son was born a week before closing uh, of that show. Great, great story. I'll tell that another time. Um, but but you know, I want to talk about the, I, I read a great play last week called uh, um, Strange Courtesies. My play? Yes. What a piece of theater. Can you talk about how you came about writing, writing oh, it? Oh, Randy, that's so thoughtful of you, my friend. Thank you. Um, I, I was introduced to uh, the people of South Africa, the politics of South Africa, the, the, the artistry of the playwrights of South Africa, when I was a young actor at the Juilliard School years ago. And it was Fugard's um, Busman and Lena. And um, I was... I was I was leaped from my first year at Juilliard into the third year because uh, in, in performance, because I got to work with second and third year uh, students, which had never been done before at Juilliard. So that got me um, a, a, a savory a taste for uh, Fugard and the people and the stories of apartheid in South Africa. And I was a voracious reader of Fugard and all South Africa since then. Um, I've done eight or nine of his plays. Most of, most of all, Master Harold and the Boys, et cetera, et cetera. But um, about eight, nine years ago, a friend of mine um, uh, invited me to a dinner party, and a few of her guests had just, uh, two of her guests had just got back from South Africa. 
and they were talking about the people and what was going on there and the politics. And I was a voracious listener. I just listened. I took mental notes. They talked about um, uh, he he got injured and he talked about a nurse in one of the hospitals, how terrific she was and how professional she was. Um, and the stories that she told about her family's plight during apartheid. And they were so moved by her. And so, and the story was so interesting. As soon as I left, literally I sat in my car for 40 minutes and I took notes because I didn't want to forget the things I heard. And then I thought to myself, you know, knowing what I know about South Africa and the uh, truth and reconciliation hearings and the fact that 44 million people of color had to suddenly turn around and forgive or at least try to forgive 7 million uh, white folks in South Africa for 46 years of apartheid atrocities and brutalities. How do you do that? How does a people how does forgiveness begin? Where does it begin? What part of your heart can say, after 46 years of this brutality, I can now live next to you, shake your hand, take my, take some, bake, bake some cookies and take it over to your house because now we're neighbors, now we're equal. When does that, how does that forgiveness um, bubble in, in, in a person's heart and soul? So my play deals with one family's search for truth and forgiveness, uh, in post-apartheid South Africa, uh, when one member of the family was brutally uh, captured, interrogated, murdered, body tossed away in some killing field. And then the, the truth and reconciliation hearings happened. Uh, and briefly, the truth and reconciliation uh, began with Desmond Tutu, the, the uh, election of, of uh, the great Nelson Mandela. Um, and it was basically to say, anybody that has done any atrocity throughout the years that you want to confess, you want to talk about it, tell us about it. There'll be amnesty, there'll be a, you, you might get fined, but whatever. come tell the truth. It has to be the truth. What happened? When did you do it? Why did you do it? Were you ordered to do it? The date it happened, what were the repercussions? Come tell us, we'll notify, we'll note it. And families, hundreds of families and hundreds of places throughout the country of South Africa, these hearings took place. And so many people came with their stories, mothers, daughters, husbands, uncles, um, and they told their stories, and the white police officers told of stories of murder, of atrocities, of, 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 um, of uh, interrogations, and what happened. And one family heard about where their son and brother was buried. And that moved me a lot, just thinking, and I watched so many videos of these hearings. So that's where my play um, came about. And Strange Courtesies, the title, as you know, I'm a Shakespearean actor. The title comes from um, Antony and Cleopatra. Mm. It's just strange courtesies. I think, I think Antony talks about uh, um, uh, Octavius with those words, these strange courtesies you afford us. And I thought, yeah, strange courtesies. It, it just makes perfect, perfect sense that the country will, will be courteous enough to, to, to have us tell our stories and have these people who murdered and, and maimed to sit there with their suits and ties and tell um, and get away with pretty much what they did, the atrocities they did. So m my protagonist, Johnny, I uh, think calls them strange courtesies. Right. So that's where, that's where the play comes about. Thank you for asking, man. I can talk about it forever. I remember calling Tony Ticcone one day and saying, I'm artistic director now. How am I going to know when I find a good play? And he laughed and said, you'll know. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and really, uh, <laughs> you do know. I mean, the, the worst thing about reading a, a new script is you, you're so involved and invested in it. You get to the last, you get to the denouement, you get to the last eight, 10 pages and you go, it went nowhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's no redemption. Where, where, where does it go? Uh, <clears throat> Strange Courtesies was uh, a powerful read. I, 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 you can tell how good a play is by how compelled you are to turn the pages. But I had to put it down at the interval because it was disarming as hell. I mean, it was, it's, it feels somehow so relevant. And I, I don't know if it's because of the nurse element in there and the, and the what would you call it? The, the passion of the gift of life that they give. The, yes. The, the passion that, that these people have to care for you, no matter who you are. No matter what you've done in life. Stuff yeah. you. Uh, but I had to, I had to put the, the play down because 
of you know, the environment that I'm in right now, it was just disarming. Uh, but I, I got up bright and early the next morning and went, I got to finish this. Um, a powerful, powerful, uh, and Johnny's, Johnny's uh, uh, scene with uh, Robert, the, it's Robert's yes. the uh, journalist, uh, powerful stuff when he comes around to why do we give these strange courtesy yes. to these people that have abused us? But it is a sense of, um, though it's placed in South Africa, it's relevance for us in America today. There was a kind of disassociation I always felt from the issues of South Africa. And my friends of color have always said, you're naive, Randy. Hmm. You know, it, it, it is very, it is so present. Just because we have a black president now doesn't mean it's not there. Yeah. And I think we're living in the wake of that now. But, but the, the issues that you dealt with in your plays, strange courtesies that, that feel relevance for me now in America, in the, in the what we have failed to say anymore, United States. States of America. Yeah. You know? So Thank I, you. I, 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 just, I so appreciate I, I just, that. And, and the years, you know, when, when I started writing that play, um, you and I were in collaboration with um, We Are Proud to Present, which of course oh, was based on the, the genocide of the Herrera people, uh, Herrero people in, 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 um, in Africa. And I, 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 it lingered with me. It never left my consciousness, even though I was struggling with, oh my gosh, how do I do this scene? How do I talk to this actor? How do I, oh my gosh, my, one of my actors is having a breakdown because this, this, this text is so close to his heart. How do I talk to this actor? And how, how do I, and a lot of those answers came to me as I'm writing the play. As I'm talking to one of the actors when he's dealing with the rope around his neck. Remember that final scene? Oh, yeah. the, the rope around his neck, right? And I thought to myself, my gosh, this, this terrific, solid African-American actor, young brother, is dealing with some kind of ancestral memory in that particular moment. But I'm sure he has never had a rope around his neck. But that moment of that scene and the white actors around him and the songs and the rhythms of that, it just took him out of the world of the play and he had to remove it. So um, I would go home, I would drive home that 45 minute drive from San Jose stage to Oakland thinking about that. And I would get home and I would make notes and think about the, the tortures that these, that, that's currently happening in South Africa, that these young men and women in South Africa didn't have to go back ancestrally. It is happening in the newspapers every day. It's happening as they marched for freedom. It's happening um, as they protest, as young people in the, south, in the Southwest Township, Soweto, um, uh, when those young people were killed and, and the, the Stephen Bicos of this world. And that moment in that rehearsal at that time brought to me the, the, the atrocities that Stephen Biko and Nelson Mandela had to deal with in their struggles in South Africa. So I, I'm, I was so grateful um, I was terrified, first of all, when you said, yeah, I want you to direct this play. Like, what? And I would read it. I'm thinking, oh, my God. But I was so grateful for, for that because it, it so paralleled the work of Strange Courtesies and what was happening in South Africa. And um, your team, your, the, 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 the actors themselves, the space wow. behind you was so... Um, I was part of the experience for all of us. When you said to me in rehearsal or in, in preparation, use the whole space, open it up in the back. We'll, we'll do whatever you need. We'll open it up in the back. We'll, we'll clear all that stuff out or we'll leave it there. And the, the rawness of that experience, Randy, was, was so helpful to me because strange courtesies can be done on your stage as it is right now. It doesn't need, it doesn't, all it needs is the passion of the actors and projections. Right. Yeah. you know, to feed the audience. So that production helped so much in my work. Well, it, it, it moves very seamlessly and, and, and it's a great read. It's a great thank read. You, sir. I so appreciate that, Randy. And I'm, I'm continuing to work on it and I'll send you updates, but thank you so much for bringing that up. Now, how, going, going back to uh, We Are Proud to Present, that yeah. was, we worked on, on David Mammoth's race together. Yes. Which yeah, is okay. another piece that deals with, with the, the, our national hypocrisy, I yep. call it. Um, 
but we're watching you work with that that ensemble and uh it was so visceral the process i don't think i've ever attended a rehearsal process or participated in a rehearsal process that was as delicate but as fiercely tackled yep. it's it was uh, uh, theater is all about juxtaposition but i don't think i've ever seen such juxtapositional elements going on through the whole process in terms of i think it was you're saying it was so personal it was everyone coming to terms with those things we hide or we hold and suppress down or Mm -hmm. And even talking about the ancestral thing. I, in this downtime of reflection, trying to take the Queen Elizabeth's advice a few weeks ago and, and reflect in this downtime, uh, I have had a sense of my ancestors that I haven't had time to appreciate yeah. and infiltrate into my own life process. It's been yeah. a kind of 40, like I say, I, and my daughter Caitlin corrected me on this because I've always said that Bertolt Brecht said, if the body politic is the anvil, the arts are the hammer that strikes it. And she said to me the other day, you know, that it's um, art is not the mirror that reflects. It is the hammer that strikes. Wow. I like mine better. But wow. I like, <laughs> but I like, it's really, I like them both. It's really, that it's really that juxtapositional thing that we deal with, whether we're doing comedy or tragedy, it's how we deal with that juxtaposition. Yep. But a show like we are proud to present is juxtapositional in hidden issues yes and yes. suppressed issues that I, I really appreciate you bringing it out in terms of i i participated in watching the process as the artistic director but you were in the thick of it in terms of balancing those delicate elements that brought a visceral production to the audience that i don't think i'll ever forget it was so real um you know, what, what, what I found um, most interesting in the process of those two plays, uh, uh, We Are Proud to Present and Race, and to a certain extent, another play that we'll talk about in a second between Riverside and Crazy, was uh, uh, initially that first table read, when we all get together at the table, for all three of those plays, and we'll talk about Riverside in a second. You know, when your director says, and your actor agrees to this, ladies and gentlemen, what happens here is art. There's nothing personal. We have to be able to speak our minds to each other. We have to be able to shake hands. We have to be able to give a hug to each other and walk away from rehearsal the way we walked into it, right? With our artistry. We cannot, we cannot use the N word in this play and think that Randy is saying that to Peter. We cannot do that. We have to say Jack is saying that to, ha to Henry right? To Henry, that was his name, yes? Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's what the play is. That's what the moment is. That's how these people lived and, re and, and reflected with each other. So we can't take those things personally. And if we, if we can clear that away, we'll, we'll have a wonderful, uh, open conversation and the audience will be open to what we're talking about. But if we take it personally, then that, that's, that's a kind of a poison, a kind of a wedge that we put into the work that is unnecessary. Um, and that goes with, with We Are Proud to Present, the wonderful production directed by Tony Kelly of Race. What a, a, a terrific cast. And, and your, man, your work in that show was a pleasure, absolute pleasure. Uh, to you scared me out there, man. You scared me out there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was amazing. And I would love to talk with you uh, one day, if not in this, in this venue, in this forum, about what it's like as an artistic director acting in your in a show at your theater being directed by somebody else people are asking me that all the time i'd love to talk with you about that if you can spend a few minutes on that sometime in this forum but um how all of that segues and works into the three plays that i've done with you um uh, culminating with the recent production of uh, between riverside and crazy my gosh uh first of all thank you again for that that offer and um uh, it, was, it seems like a natural evolution, doesn't it? It so, seems like almost a natural evolution of the work we've done together in it, terms of how we want to address certain things. Yes, you know? yes, absolutely. I started, I started with you as a, as a cocky um, uh, Cuban boxer at your theater, right? Uh, you know, this, 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 this Monte Quia Decima, right? And the last thing I did with you is this 60 something year old, you know, ex cop, old scruffy Archie beard. Bunker. With, you know, with a limp, and uh, he shot eight times, bitter, suing the New York City, you know, the, the police department. 
Uh, beautiful, beautiful stuff. And, and, and again, in that space behind you, um, I will, I will, it was an experience I will never forget with a cast. And then your, your input throughout, man, was just, was just subtle and, and, and nurturing and just, and just nudge us in the right direction at all times. And that's a question I have for you, man. How do you, how do you do that? <laughs> I want to learn. I want to learn how to better do that, how to step in in a rehearsal. It, it's an interesting thing because really, you know, once you, and you know, once you get the show up, it's up. And for me, it became, how do I participate once it's up? If I don't bring up something that kind of, what I call it, kicked me in the back of the head and right. let it live, but it keeps kicking me. If it, I learn not to let it kick me, get it off and on the table to address it in a way that, that me participating on the other side of the fourth wall, every time we get to that moment, I don't go, damn it. I wish I just addressed that and figured out a solution for that. Um, yeah. You don't want to mess up the organics. You know, but you don't, you don't want to pour in an idea that might take it the wrong direction. Right. But it's really for me about the third or fourth time something kicks me, what I call it, kicks me in the head that doesn't feel right. I have to find out a way to explore a solution. And that's really been kind of a rule of thumb for me because I know once it's there and the audience is there, it's, it's there. Yeah. And yeah. It could be something so small and subtle that, uh, the tweaking of it can make a difference in the trajectory of the tail. So uh, I get it. I understand that. And you, you've, you've learned, you've learned a way of doing choose that. Battles. <laughs> hmm? <Use bats. laughs> choose the battles too, you know, oh, you know choose the battles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's true. Uh, Certain things are super important and you've found a way to, to chisel, to, to help sculpt um, uh, through your director and through your knowledge and through your, 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 your and, and you know, your space. So That's well. really, you just made me think my thought was exactly that a lot of it comes out of saying you're playing the moment great but only a certain section of our audience is feeling it with the impact there the rest of the audience might be feeling but not with that impact how do we open that moment up yeah so that yeah. the 180 degrees they're they're not wondering what they missed yeah what, that's, what that's part of what motivates that do you find, Randy, when, you, <clears throat> when you're choosing your season, for example, when we did, the, I, again, such a terrific production of Between Riverside and Crazy, but graphics, right? You look at your audience, the people that sit in those red seats behind you, and you say, shoot, man, this play has got language, it's got the N-word, it's got, it's got um, violence in it, it's got drug use, it's got alcohol use, it's got... Is, how is my audience gonna embrace this? Or do you say, I love this play and I wanna do this play. And Come I will talk to them if they wanna talk to me afterwards, I'll talk to them. But you know, I'm gonna do cabaret and I'm gonna do this, this musical, but my gosh, I wanna do this play. How do you, what, what, what is that I, thing? I, that, that's a very ethereal type of, the, the, the answer would be just as ethereal as that question, but it's really about many years ago, being informed that you're going to have to remind yourself why you do this from time to time. And what that, what that awareness of that thought of the desperation, the struggle we do as artists to do our craft, but it opened up a door for me that I call listening to the muses. Things come at me in a way that the choices I think we make as a company are made in that organic sense. It's not, it's not like a season comes together, I'm gonna to do this play and I'm gonna do, it, it really morphs itself in terms of the climates we're living in, yeah. the socio-political climates we're living in. And really like Mr. Tacconi said to me many years ago, you'll know, and it's really about knowing that this is the, and I can't say the word because it's in the Scottish play, but this is the time to do this. Right. This is the time to do this. And, and you really, and I also always say, it's not about me just choosing a play. It's about choosing a, pushing a play into the company that the company gets as excited as I do. And when that happens, I know it's time, you know. And, 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 and what, I, and what I, I so appreciate about our collaboration, Randy, is that you've offered me over the years opportunities to, to stretch what I think I know. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think I know my stuff. I, I do. I think I'm physical. I think I know language. I think I can create roles. I think I could embody characters. But you say, I, I want, I want uh, this, this is for you. I've been thinking about you for this. And I, and I read it. And I'm like, Randy, I use, uh, 
what <laughs> a 60 year old ex cop with a the, 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 what and i read i'm like gosh yes and i from from blade to the heat to race to we are proud to present to Riverside and Crazy, you've offered me such a, 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 a venue, an opportunity to stretch and to be daring. And um, I, I, at this time in my career, I don't accept roles that don't scare me anymore. I've gotta be, I've gotta, you know, you know that feeling, right? I gotta be a little nervous about it. I gotta be scared about it. And you do that for me every single time. Well, fear is my main motivation, but I've yeah. never, I, I swear, uh, Really, really, I've never read something that I didn't call you and say that. And one of the things of being in a region for 40 years is you start reading plays, you hear an actor's voice in it. Yeah. You know, it happens a lot with me where I've, I have a familiarity with, with artists like you that I, I, I hear your voice when I'm reading it. And it's not, I don't want to say I'm, I'm acting for you, but I know your rhythms and your sensibilities in the sense that, that there's, it's a lock. And I think you're right. I've called you and said, just thinking about how we came on to race together. And oh, it's just that the, the muses made that happen because yeah. you, you book a year in advance. Yeah. I, I'll call you many times and say, I got something. You go, I have not. But that one clicked. Because, and, and the weird thing is, you always say to me, when does it close? And yeah. I'm thinking, that's what everyone wants to know when it's rehearsal start. You always say, when does it close? And on race, it was like, I called you. You called me. I was going to call you about race. You called me about a technical element yep. at the African American. You were looking for some personnel. And then I said, I was just going to call you about this play. By the end of it, you brought up ZZ. That's who, right. Right? Who, who, right. Who we cast in the show as well. But it just clicked. And the, and the timeline for that show was a Sunday, a Tuesday start on your previous contract, Sunday close. And on the book in the same thing, it just fit. It just fits. And I said, the muses made this happen, man. They wanted yeah. this to happen. And, it was one of the always, and your, your audiences, man, your, yeah. your audiences, uh, every time I go see a show there, they remember me, they remember the shows. You have, you have created a, a world in that, on that corner in San Jose. You've created a place, uh, a gathering place. Um, again, it's not, just, it's not just a theater. It's, it's a gathering place. It's a place where people go to listen. To, to participate. I read, an, I read an article the other day that, that, um, that I've been thinking about ever since where um, it, it spoke about the, the heartbeat of the audience when they're all in one place. After a while, the rhythms of their heartbeat becomes one. And I thought, and I think that's what happens in the best theaters, uh, in the best directed shows, in the best acted shows. The audience, uh, the tech work, the actors, the audience, everybody starts Breathing is one. Breathing is one. All I was saying was we never get to talk about this kind of stuff on this level unless we're having a drink at the theater, <laughs> you know, uh, and it's, you know, a couple of minutes, but um, it really does set perspective in terms of how far back we go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and how far and how far forward we have, we have left yeah. you know, and, and where we can go from here. I mean, we talk about, you know, I was talking about the, the, the heartbeat of the audience and, and uh, uh, the actors in that space at the table and what we create in, in, the, in the years we've worked together and the years, my gosh, your, your career going back for many years that, that we can all learn from, that we can all um, embrace and say, yes, I learned that from Randy, his acting, his directing, his teaching. Um, and then how do we re, re, um, reestablish that in being in the, not being in the same room for a while? Um, when do we, how do we get back? We've had to reflect in terms of working so hard to keep our next project going. We so seldom have the opportunity to talk about our processing that we went through. Just this conversation with you, Peter, has enlightened me to some elements I, I lived through but was unaware of. Peter, if there's, been, if there's been any positive side to this stay in place and, and artistic isolation, it has been the time to reflect. Like just talking with you these last few minutes about some of the processes we've been through, making me aware of some of the elements you dealt with that we worked on together. It's, it's, it gives me insight into what our processes actually were you know because you're working so spontaneously and you want to be organic and we never get a chance to posthumously look at what we did you know i agree uh, and, and and like i said earlier the force at which we live our lives this is very strange time um 
Tell me about your project in San Diego. Well, gotcha. yeah, I, I would love to. I want to. I want to touch. Yes, I would love to to do that. I want to touch yeah. on something you just said, which really made me the breath I took when you said that. Uh, yeah, just lifted me a little bit. I, I think you're right. We never, you know, we may have a drink after a show, after you know, cast party. Great job, da 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 da. But this sort of artistic director to artistic director and, and the collaboration and the collaborative efforts that you and I continue to make and we will continue to make over the, the years to come. Um, this downtime always just reminds me that although we are striving for the same types of audiences, although we are striving for the same types of plays, the demographics may be the same. Did, did ACT, ACT do the show that I wanted to do down here? Did Berkeley Rep do the same? We have to come to terms now, I think, with more collaboration, with more, hey, Randy, how can our, both our theaters work together? Because, you know, we all, I all, my grandmother always said, tomorrow, tomorrow is not promised to us. How do we pick up from where we left off now and say, hey, I want to talk to Randy. I want to talk to Randy about this play I, I just saw um, up in Petaluma. How can he and I work on that play to support that theater, his theater, and my theater? And I think that's where this, this downtime needs to feed us. We need to realize that we're all in this together. I see that all the time. We're in this together. We're in this together as human beings. We are. But as artists, we need to be drawn more to each other as, as, as the hairs in our skin, as the, the veins in our bodies keeps, keeps us alive. We have to make sure that each, each of our friendships and each of our collaborations will continue to thrive past this. And I think this downtime really will help with that. Um, and similarly, just as you brought it up, the, um, the production I'm working in San Jose, in San Diego, um, with a filmmaker, and there's a, there's a competition, a five minute film that has to do with quarantine um, and Shakespeare. And he called me right away, he says, okay, how do we do this? I said, well, we, we know there, there are quarantines in, in Romeo and Juliet, there's quarantines mentioned in, in, um, in the Scottish play. He said, well, we, we decided on Romeo and Juliet and, and a five minute film, uh, uh, social distancing has to be part of it. Um, there's no touching, no kissing, no, no actors, more than this, a uh, certain distance away from each other, and it's a competition. How can you add the word, put in the word quarantine or COVID-19 in a five-minute film dealing with that and Shakespeare? And it was, it's just an incredible um, combination of, of the perfect storm for me and he. And that collaboration is going to lead to 30-minute um, Shakespeare pieces in which we are teaching young people how to understand Shakespeare. Because right. I feel that over in the next 50, right now, there are Shakespeare companies around the country who are not doing as many Shakespeare plays. I, I mentioned to you, you know, Cal Shakes, my beloved Cal Shakes, maybe one Shakespeare a year now. It started with, with four. We used to do four and then go on tour, right? My beloved Cal Shakes is doing one Shakespeare piece. So um, I don't, can't tell the last time you did a Shakespeare piece. What was the last time you did a Shakespeare piece? At, we did uh, one. We did the Scottish play. Right, yes. Um, uh, and we talked, we've talked, uh, uh, Mr. Kelleher and I have talked a lot about doing a, a, a chamberized version of uh, Othello, uh, which we just haven't gotten around to it. But, but you have made me aware of how little Shakespeare we've done. And, and, and it is public domain and it is great writing and they are great stories. And didn't, didn't Shakespeare write King Lear in, in quarantine During from the quarantine, right? right? Yes. Right. So, so this is the time, this is the time for all of us. And thank you for this forum and thank you for being beyond the boards because this is the time when we can all say if uh, now is the time to create, to recreate, to rethink, to resolve, to understand each other, to come to terms with who we are as human beings, first of all, this frail, this frail being of ours that is so easily depraved, deprived of nourishment because of one little invisible virus that can take us down. We are so vulnerable. So let's come, to, let's, let's come closer to each other now, um, even while social distancing, but let's come closer to each other as artists and say, how can we as human beings, as artists, step away from this process, having learned more about the craft that we love so much, the friendships that we wish to garner, Right? The artistry that we've been taught by so many people, 
right? And then the love of what we do to bring young artists into the world and teach them. Yeah. How do we move on from there? And I think this process, what you're doing with your group is beginning that. And thank you for yeah. this. You know, you know, Peter, too, there's something that, that when we started the Sage Company almost you know, 39 years ago, we had to explain to people, you know, we're starting an off-Broadway style theater, off-Broadway style theater, well, you're three, more than 3,000 miles away from off-Broadway, what are you talking about? That the mid-sized theater movement that started 40, 50 years ago is now the theater movement of this country. The great plays used to come out of, they had to come out of the Great White Way, out of Broadway. Right. Now they're all, 90% the, 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 of the plays coming out are coming out of mid-sized theater. And I think that this pandemic is going to teach us as mid-sized theaters how to consolidate our energies and work together in collaboration yes. uh, uh, to support each other and, and to bring great material to our patrons and our, our supporters. But it's something that I've just realized in the downtime here that what we used to have to explain to people about the mid-sized theater, ACT opened the mid-sized theater, Berkeley, yeah, they're, they're, you know, they're, the intimate theater process is going to be the answer to the virtual world in terms of you want to really feel something, come into a tight space with some really good actors and get a story hurled at you that you will take home. One in a hundred movies can do that to you. Yep. But the odds are a lot better in a live theater performance that you are going to be, your life could be changed by a story told properly. Correct. And I think all our lives in the past six, seven weeks, all our lives have changed. Right. And, and, and uh, so there's, there's somebody up there looking at this theater <laughs> right and realizing oh my gosh all all our lives have been changed now how can we take that encapsulate it and bring it back when people are sitting behind you and say because of what happened over the past three months san jose stage is presenting a different type of theater a theater that moves us in different ways a theater that brings us together in different ways that we've learned our lessons from this empty space when we think of what, what we've learned from this process and when we're stepping forward, I think we have a long way to go. And I think there are no excuses. Uh, we, are, we are on our way to creating more and more great theater, even from this empty time we've all experienced. Yeah, yeah. There, it's, it's, it's a lesson we need to learn. Yeah. And I think a lot of greatness is going to come out of it. Um, the pendulum that's going to swing back. I, I don't want to sound over hopeful, but I do think that Great art comes out of great trauma. Mm. This is great fuel for the arts. It's just having to survive the downtime. Uh, gosh, thank you, Peter, for, for sharing your time with us. It's just been great talking to you, my brother. I mean, thank I want to do this tomorrow, man. Can, <laughs> you know, uh, I'll be calling you just to chat, my friend. Uh, God bless you, stay, God. stay safe. I will. You too, my friend. God bless you and your family. Uh, and your theater. I look forward to treading the boards with you in the near future. Uh, thank you to your team, um, and and uh, keep keep doing the great work that you that you were born to do, my friend. Thank you so much for this opportunity.